Hare Krishna everyone. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the live studios um, in the Haven, Kent, UK, Hive, the Haven. Srila Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur had this to say about the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. He said, in due course, Maha Pralaya, devastating floods, will inundate the entire universe. If you attempt to survive by swimming in that deluge, then do not neglect to take hold of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Or, if you cannot hold all three, then release Bhagavad Gita. If necessary, you may also relinquish Srimad Bhagavatam, but under no circumstances release your hold on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. For if this one book remains, then the flood can do no actual damage, because after the flood has subsided, the message of Shastra can be revived from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita alone, it being the essence of all Shastra. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya. Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda All right, we're well into the nectar, chapter 1 of Antyalila, <clears throat> second visit of Srila Rupa, Rupa Goswami to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what's happening right now is that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has brought uh, Ramananda Roy, Srupa Damodar, um, and other senior devotees to see Rupa Goswami to examine his uh, writing and he was just asked uh, Rupa Goswami was just asked to state how it is that the verse that enlivens the readers the hearers uh, is arranged. And that's where we left off at text 138. The devotees now present are constantly thinking of the Supreme Lord and are therefore highly advanced. This work named Vidagda Madhava depicts the characteristic pastimes of Lord Krishna with decorations of poetic ornaments. And the inner grounds of the forest of Vrindavan provide a suitable platform for the dancing of Krishna with the gopis. Therefore, I think that the pious activities of persons like us who have tried to advance in devotional service have now attained maturity. Purport. This is verse 8 of the first act of the Vidagda Madhava. 139. O learned devotees, I am by nature ignorant and low, yet even though it is from me that the Vidagda Madhava has come, it is filled with descriptions of the transcendental attributes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, will not such a literature bring about the attainment of the highest goal of life? Although wood may be ignited, by a low-class man, the resulting fire can nevertheless purify gold. Similarly, although I am very low by nature, this book may help cleanse the dirt from within the hearts of the golden devotees. Purport. This verse is Vidagda Madhava 1, 6, 140. 
Then Ramananda Roy inquired from Rupa Goswami about the causes of the loving affairs between Krishna and the gopis, such as previous attachment, transformations of love, endeavors for love, and exchanges of letters disclosing the gopis, awa gopis awakening love for Krishna. Text 141 Srila Rupa Goswami gradually informed Ramananda Roy about everything he asked. All the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were struck with wonder upon hearing Rupa Goswami's explanations. Purport Srila Rupa Goswami has explained Kama Likana in his book Ujwala Nilamani, Vipalamba Prakarana 26. Sa leka kama leka syat yak sva prema prakashikaha yuvatya yuniyunya cha yuvatyam samprahiyate. Exchange of letters between young boy and girl concerning their awakening of attachment for each other is called Kama Leka. 142 Experiencing previous attachment to Krishna, Puravarag, Srimati Radharani thought, Since I have heard the name of a person named Krishna, I have practically lost my good sense. Then there is another person who plays his flute in such a way that after I hear the vibration, intense madness arises in my heart. And again there is still another person to whom my mind becomes attached when I see his beautiful lightning-like effulgence in his picture. Therefore I think that I am greatly condemned for I have become simultaneously attached to three persons. It would be better for me to die because of this. Purport. This verse is Vidagda Madhava 2.9 143 My dear friend, these palpitations of Srimati Radharani's heart are extremely difficult to cure. Even if one applied some medical treatment, it would only end in defamation. Purport. This verse, Vidagda Madhava 2.8, is spoken by Srimati Radharani herself. Text 144. O oh, dearly beautiful one, the artistic loveliness of your picture is now impressed within my mind. Since you are now living within my mind, wherever I wish to run because I am agitated by impressions of you, I find that you, my dear, oh my friend, are blocking my way. Purport This verse, Vidagda Madhava 2.33, is written in the Prakrit language, not in Sanskrit. When, when transformed into Sanskrit, it reads as follows. Dritva pratichand gunam sundara mama mandire twam basasi tata tata runatsi balitam yata yata chakita pralaye. The meaning is the same, but the native language is different. It was spoken by Krishna, it was spoken to Krishna by Marumangal as he read him a letter from Srimati Radharani. 145. Upon seeing peacock feathers in front of her, this girl suddenly becomes tr begins trembling. When she sometimes sees a necklace of gunja, sm small conch shells, she sheds tears and cries loudly. I do not know what kind of new ecstatic influence has entered the heart of this poor girl. It has imbued her with the dancing attitude of a player creating wonderful, unprecedented dances on a stage. Purport This verse, 
Vidagda Madhava 2.15 is spoken by Mukhara, a friend of Lord Krishna's grandmother, in a conversation with Purnamasi, the grandmother of Madhu Mangal. 146. Srimati Radharani said to her constant companion, Vishaka, My dear friend, if Krishna is unkind to me, there will be no need for you to cry, for it will, be not, for it will not be due to any fault of yours. I shall then have to die. But afterwards, please do one thing for me. To observe my funeral ceremony, place my body with its arms embracing a tamal tree, like creepers, so that I may forever remain forever in Vrindavan, undisturbed. That is my last request. Purport. This is this verse is Vedakta Madhava two forty seven. <clears throat> Text one forty seven. Ramananda Roy inqu- inquired, What are the characteristics of emotional love? Rupa Goswami replied, This is the nature of emotional love for Krishna. My dear beautiful friend, if one develops love for Godhead, love of Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj, all the bitter and sweet influence of this love will manifest in one's heart. Such love of Godhead acts in two ways. The poisonous effects of love of Godhead defeat the severe and fresh poison of the serpent. Yet there is simultaneously transcendental bliss which pours down and defeats the poisonous effects of a snake as well as the happiness derived from pouring nectar on one's head. It is perceived as doubly effective simultaneously poisonous and nectarian. Purport This verse is from the Vidagda Madhava 2.18. It also appears in the Madhya chapter 2, verse 52. It was spoken by Purnamasi. Text 149. Ramananda Roy further inquired, what are the natural characteristics of awakening love of Godhead. Rupa Goswami replied, These are the natural characteristics of love of God. When one hears praise from his beloved, he outwardly remains neutral, but feels pain within his heart. When he hears his beloved making accusations about him, he takes them to be jokes and enjoys pleasure. When he finds faults in his beloved, they do not diminish his love, nor do the the beloved's good qualities increase his spontaneous affection. Thus, spontaneous love continues under all circumstances. That is how spontaneous love of Godhead acts within the heart. Purport This verse from the Vidagda Madhava 5.4 is spoken by Purnamasi, the grandmother of Madhumango and mother of Sandipani Muni. <clears throat> Text 151 Upon hearing of my cruelty, moon-faced Radharani may establish some kind of tolerance in her aggrieved heart. But then she might turn against me or indeed being fearful of the lusty desires invoked by the bow of formidable Cupid, she might even give up her life. Alas, I have foolishly uprooted the soft creeper of her desire just when it was ready to bear fruit. PURPORT Having been very cruel to Srimati Radharani, Krishna is repenting in this way. Vidagda Madhava 2.40 Text 152 Desiring the happiness of his association and embraces, my dear friend, I disregarded even my superiors and relaxed my shyness and gravity before them. Furthermore, although you are my best friend, 
more dear to me than my own life. I have given you so much trouble. Indeed, I even put aside the vow of dedication to my husband, a vow kept by the most devoted, the most elevated women. Oh, alas, although he is now neglecting me, I am so sinful that I am still living. Therefore, I must condemn my so-called patience. Purport Srimati Radharani is speaking this verse, Vidagda Madhava 241, to her intimate friend, Vishaka Devi. Text 153 I was engaged in my own playful activities in my home, <clears throat> and because of my childish innocence, I did not know right from wrong. Therefore, it is, is it good for you to have forced us into being so much attracted to you and then to have neglected us? Now you are indifferent to us? Do you think this is right? Purport This verse, Vidagda Madhava 246, is spoken to Krishna by Srimati Radharani. Text 154 Our hearts are so polluted by miserable conditions that we are certainly going to Pluto's kingdom. Nevertheless, Krishna does not give up his beautiful, loving smiling, which is full of cheating tricks. O Srimati Radharani, you are very intelligent. How could you have developed such great loving affection for this deceitful debauchee from the neighborhood of the cowherds? Purport This verse, Vidagda Madhava 237, is spoken to Radharani by Lalita Saki, another confidential friend. Text 155 O Lord Krishna, you are just like an ocean. The river of Srimati Radharani has reached, from you, has reached you from a long distance, leaving far behind the tree of her husband, breaking through the bridge of social convention and forcibly crossing the hills of elder relatives. Coming here because of fresh feelings of love for you, that river has now received your shelter. But now you are trying to turn her back by the waves of unfavorable words. How is it that you are spreading this attitude? <laughs> Purport this verse from the Vidagda Madhava 3.9 is spoken to Lord Krishna by Purnamasi. 156. Srila Ramananda Roy further inquired, How have you described Vrindavan, the vibration of the transcendental flute, and the relationship between Krishna and Radhika? 157. Please tell me all this because your poetic ability is wonderful. After offering obeisances to Ramananda Roy, Rupa Goswami gradually began answering his inquiries. This, this sweet, fragrant honey oozing from newly grown mango buds is again and again attracting groups of bumblebees. Mm, I'll read that again. Excuse me. <clears throat> the sweet fragrant honey oozing from newly grown mango buds is again and again attracting groups of bumblebees and this forest is trembling in the softly moving breezes from the Malaya hills which are full of sandalwood trees thus the forest of Vrindavan is increasing my transcendental pleasure purport this verse from the Vidagda Madhava 123 is spoken by Lord Krishna himself. One fifty nine. My dear friend, see how this forest of Vrindavan is full of transcendental creepers and trees. 
The tops of the creepers are full of flowers, and intoxicated bumblebees are buzzing around them, humming songs that please the ear and surpass even the Vedic hymns. Purport. This verse from the Vidagda Madhava, 124, is spoken by Lord Balaram to his friend, Sri Dhamma. 160. My dear friend, this forest of Vrindavan is giving great pleasure to our senses in various ways. Somewhere bumblebees are singing in groups and in some places mild bees are cooling the entire atmosphere. Somewhere the creepers and tree twigs are dancing. The malika flowers are expanding their fragrance and an overabundance of juice is constantly flowing in showers from pomegranate fruits. This verse from the Vidagda Madhava, 131, is spoken by Lord Krishna to his cow, cowherd friend, Madhu Mangal. Text 161. The flute of Krishna's pastimes measures three fingers in length and it is bedecked with Indranila gems. At the ends of the flute, are Aruna gems, rubies, glittering beautifully, and between its ends the flute is plated with gold, set ablaze by diamonds. This auspicious flute, pleasing to Krishna, is glittering in his hand with transcendental brilliance. Purport This verse from the Vidagda Madhava 3.1 is spoken by Lalita Devi to, to Lalita Devi by Purnamasi. Text 162 My dear friend the flute, it appears that you have been born of a very good family because your residence is in the hands of Sri Krishna. By birth you are simple and are not at all crooked. Why then have you taken initiation into this dangerous mantra that enchants the assembled gopis? Purport. This verse, Vidagda Madhava 5.17, is spoken by Srimati Radharani. 163. My dear friend, the flute, you are actually full of many holes or faults. You are light, hard, juiceless, and full of knots. But what kind of pious activities have engaged you in the service of being kissed by the Lord? and embraced by his hands. Purport This verse, Vidagda Madhava 4.7, is spoken by Chandravali Saki, the gopi competitor of Sri Mati Radharani. <clears throat> Text 164 <clears throat> The transcendental vibration of Krishna's flute blocked the movements of the rain clouds, struck the Gandharvas full of wonder, and agitated the meditation of great saintly persons like Sanaka and Sanandana. <clears throat> it created wonder in Lord Brahma, wrought intense curiosity that agitated the mind of Bali Maharaj, who was otherwise firmly fixed made Maharaj Ananta, the carrier of the planets, whirl around and penetrated the so strong coverings of the universe. Thus the sound of the flute in the hands of Krishna created a wonderful situation. Purport This verse, Vidagda Madhava 127, is spoken by Madhu Mangal, a cowherd friend of Krishna's. 165. The beauty of Krishna's eyes surpasses the beauty of white lotus flowers. His yellow garments surpass the brilliance of fresh decorations of kumkum. His ornaments of selected forest flowers subdue the hankering for the best of garments, and his bodily beauty possesses mind-attracting splendor 
greater than the jewels known as Makarat, ma, Marakata Mani, emeralds. Purport. This verse is from this verse from Vidagda Madhava one seventeen is spoken by Purnamasi. One sixty six. All most beautiful friend, please accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is standing before you full of transcendental bliss. The borders of his eyes, the borders of his eyes roam from side to side and his eyebrows move slowly like bumblebees on his lotus-like face. Standing with his right foot placed below the knee of his left leg, the middle of his body curved in three places and his neck gracefully tilted to the side, he takes his flute to his pursed lips and moves his fingers upon it here and there. Purport This verse from the Lalita Madhava Nataka 4.28 A tenek o oh, This verse from the Lalita Madhava Nataka 4.28 A tenek play by Rup, Srila Rupa Goswami is spoken by Lalita Devi to Radharani. Text 167. O oh, beautiful faced one, who is this creative person standing before us? With the sharp chisels of his loving glances, he is splitting the hard stones of many women's devotion to their husbands. And with the luster of his body, surpassing the brilliance of countless emeralds, he is simultaneously constructing private meeting places for his pastimes. Purport This verse, Lalita Madhava, 152, is spoken by Radharani to Lalita Devi. 168 My dear friend, this, you, this newly youthful Lord Sri Krishna, my dear friend, this newly youthful Lord Sri Krishna, the moon in the family of Nanda Maharaj is so beautiful that he defies the beauty of clusters of valuable jewels. All, all glorious to the vibration of his flute, for, it's cunningly, for it is cunningly breaking the patience of chaste ladies by loosening their belts and tight dresses. Purport This verse from Lalita Madhava, 149, is spoken by Lalita Devi, to Radharani. 169. The beauty of Srimati Radharani's eyes forcibly devours the beauty of newly grown blue lotus flowers, and the beauty of her face surpasses that of, a, of an entire forest of fully blossomed lotuses. Her bodily luster seems to place even gold into a painful situation. Thus the wonderful, unprecedented beauty of Srimati Radharani is awakening in Vrindavan. Purport. This verse is from the Vidagna Madhava, 132. It is spoken by Purnamasi. Text 170. Mm. Although the effulgence of the moon is brilliant initially at night, in the daytime it fades away. Similarly, although the lotus is beautiful during the daytime, at night it closes. But, oh my friend, the face of my most dear Srimati Radharani is always bright and beautiful, both day and night. Therefore, to what can her face be compared? This verse, Vidagda Madhava, 5.20, is spoken by Sri Krishna to Madhu Mangal. 171. When Srimati Radharani smiles, waves of joy flow over her cheeks and her eyebrows, arched like the bow of Cupid, dance. Her glance is so enchanting that it is like a dancing bumblebee moving unsteadily due to intoxication. 
that bee has bitten the horror of my heart. Purport. This verse from the Vidagda Madhava 251 is also spoken by Lord Krishna. 172. Having heard these verses recited by Rupa Goswami, Sri Ramananda Roy said, Your poetic expressions are like continuous showers of nectar. Kindly let me hear the introductory portion of the second drama. Text 173. Srila Rupa Goswami said, <clears throat> In your presence, which is just like brilliant sunshine, I am as insignificant as the light of a glowworm. Text 174. It is even impudent for me to open my mouth before you. Then, having said this, he recited the introductory verse of the Lalita Madhava. The beautiful moonlight glories of Mukunda give distress to the lotus-like faces of the wives of the demons and to their raised breasts, which are like gleaming chakravaka birds. Those glories, however, are pleasing to all his devotees, who are like chakora birds. May those glories forever give pleasure to you all. Purport. This is the first verse of Act 1 of the Lalita Madhava. 176. When Srila Ramananda Roy further inquired about the second introductory verse, Srila Rupa Goswami was somewhat hesitant, but nevertheless he began to recite. Mm. The moon like Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is known as the son of Mother Shachi, has now appeared on earth to spread devotional love of himself. He is the emperor of the Brahmana community. He can drive away all the darkness of ignorance and control the mind of everyone in the world. May that rising moon bestow upon us all good fortune. Hare Krishna. Purport. This is the third verse of Act 1 of the Lalita Madhava. Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was inwardly greatly pleased when he heard this verse, externally he spoke as if angry. Your exalted poetic descriptions of the mellows of Lord Krishna's pastimes are like an ocean of nectar. But why have you put in a false prayer about me? It is like a drop of detestable alkali. <laughs> Hare Krishna. One, 180. Srila Ramananda Roy objected. It is not alkali at all. It is a particle of camphor he has put into the nectar of his exalted poetic expression. 181. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, My dear Ramananda Roy, you are jubilant at hearing these poetic, poetic expressions, but I am ashamed to hear them, for people in general will joke about the subject of this verse. 182. Ramananda Roy said, Instead of joking, people in general will feel great pleasure in hearing such poetry, for the initial remembrance of the worshipable deity invokes a good fortune. 183. Ramananda, Ramananda Roy re inquired, By which subdivision of style do the play players enter? Rupa Goswami then began to speak specifically about this subject. 184. While dancing on the stage after having killed the ruler, of uncivilized men, Kangsa. Lord Krishna, master of all arts, will at, will at the proper time 
except the hand of Srimati Radharani, who is qualified with all transcendental attributes. Purport. This verse is Lalita Madhava 1.11. This introduction is technically called Udghatyaka, and the whole scene is called Viti. VT. You are so expert in dramatic expression that each of my statements before you is like a wave from an ocean of impudence. Purport. In this connection, Srila Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur again quotes the following verse from the Sahitya Dharbana 7 to 288. Udgatyaka katod gata prayogati shayashtata pravarta pravarta ka valigi valagite pancha prastavana bida thus the technical names for the five kinds of introductory scenes of the drama are listed as udgatyaka ud udgatyaka katod gata Prayogadishaya, Pravartaka, and Avalagita. When Sri Ramananda Roy inquired which of these five Sri Rupa Goswami has used to accomplish the technical introduction to his drama, Lalita Madhava, Rupa Goswami replied that he had used the introduction technically called Udgatyaka. According to the Bharati Vritti, Three technical terms used are prarochana, viti, and prahasana. Thus, Rupa Goswami also mentioned viti, which is a technical term for a certain type of expression. According to the Sahitya Dharpana 6.520, vityam ekobaved anka kaschit eko trikalpaye. Kalpyate Akasha Bashitar Uktaish Chitram Pratyuktim Ashritaha. The viti beginning of a drama the viti beginning of a drama consists of only one scene. In that scene one of the heroes enters the stage and by means of opposing statements uttered by a voice from the sky off stage he introduces the abundant conjugal mellow and other mellows to some degree. In the course of the introduction, all the seeds of the play are planted. This introduction is called Udgatyaka because the player dances on the stage. This term also indicates that the full moon enters the stage. In this case, when the word Natata dancing on the stage is linked with the moon its meaning is obscure because because but because the meaning because very becomes very clear when the word natata, natata is linked with krishna this type of introduction is called udgayaka udgatyaka Sri ramananda roy used highly technical terms when he discussed this subject with Srila Goswami, Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami stated that Srila Ramananda Roy was a greatly learned scholar of bona fide dramatic composition. Thus, although Srila Rupa Goswami was quite fit to answer Srila Ramananda Roy's questions, due to his Vaishnava humility, he said that, with, that, he said that his words were impudent. Actually, both Rupa Goswami and Ramananda Roy were scholarly experts in composing poetry and presenting it strictly according to the Sahitya Dharbana and other Vedic literatures. To explain an unclear word, men generally join it with other words. Such an attempt is called Udgatyaka. Purport. This verse is quoted from the Sahitya Dharbana, 
6 to 89. When Ramananda Roy requested Srila Rupa Goswami to speak further about various portions of the play, Srila Rupa Goswami briefly quoted his Lalita Madhava. The dust from cows and calves on the road creates a kind of darkness, indicating that Krishna is returning from home, returning home from the pasture. Also, the darkness of evening provokes the gopis to meet Krishna. Thus, the pastimes of Krishna and the gopis are covered by a kind of transcendental darkness and are therefore impossible for ordinary scholars of the Vedas to see. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Purport. This verse from the Lalita Madhava 123 is spoken by Purnamasi in a conversation with Gargi. Krishna states in the Bhagavad Gita 245, Trigunya Vishaya, Vishaya Veda Nistrigunyo Bhavarjana. Thus he advised, he advised Arjuna to rise above the modes of material nature, for the entire Vedic system is filled with descriptions involving Sattvagun, Rajagun, and Tamagun. People are generally covered by the quality of Rajagun and are therefore unable to understand the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis of Braja. Moreover, the quality of Tamaguna further disturbs their understanding. In Vrindavan, however, although Krishna is covered by the hazy darkness of the dust, the gopis can nevertheless understand that, without, that within the dust storm is Krishna. Because they are his topmost devotees, they can perceive his hand in everything. Thus, even in the dark, or in a hazy storm of dust, devotees can ascertain what Krishna is doing. The purport of this verse is that under no circumstances is Krishna ever lost to the vision of exalted devotees like the gopis. 189 May the sweet sound of Lord Krishna's flute, his authorized messenger, be glorified for it expertly releases Srimati Radharani from her shyness and attracts her from her home to the forest. Purport This verse from the Lalita Madhava 124 is spoken by Gargi, the daughter of Gargamuni. 190 My dear friend, who is this fearless young man? He is as bright as a lightning cloud and he wanders in his pastimes like a matted elephant. From where has he come to Vrindavan? Alas, by his restless movements and attractive glances he is plundering from the vault of my heart the treasure of my patience. Purport This verse, the Lita Madhava 2.11 is spoken by Srimati Radharani to her friend, Lalita Devi. Shimati Radharani is the Ganges in which the elephant of my mind enjoys pastimes. She is the shining of the full autumn moon for the chakora birds of my eyes. She is the dazzling ornament, the bright and beautiful arrangement of stars on the border of the sky of my chest now today I have gained Shimati Radharani because of the highly elevated state of my mind. Purport This verse from the Lalita Madhava 2.10 expresses the thoughts of Lord Krishna in relation with Radharani. Text 192 after hearing this, Srila Ramananda Roy submitted at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the super excellence of Srila Rupa Goswami's poetic expression and began to praise it, praise it as if he had thousands of mouths. 
Srila Ramana, Ramananda Roy said, This is not a poetic presentation. It is a continuous shower of nectar. Indeed, it is the essence of all ultimate realizations appearing in the form of plays. 194. The wonderful descriptions of Rupa Goswami are superb arrangements to express loving affairs. Hearing them will plunge the heart and ears of everyone into a whirlpool of transcendental bliss. 195. What is the use of a bowman's arrow or a poet's poetry if they penetrate the heart but do not cause the head but not cause the head to spin? 196. Without your mercy, such poetic expressions would be impossible for an ordinary living being to write. My guess is that you have given him the power. 197. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, I met Srila Rupa Goswami at Prayag. He attracted and satisfied me because of his qualities. Purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is not partial to some and neutral to others. One can actually draw the attention of the Supreme Personality of Godhead by service. Then the Lord further empowers that person to act in such a way that everyone can appreciate one's service. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 4.11 Yeyata mam prapadyante Tang Sataiva Bajam Yaham. Krishna is responsive. If one tries to render his best service to the Lord, the Lord gives him the power to do so. Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita 10.10, Te Sham Satate Yukdanam Bajatam Priti Purvakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenamam Upayanti Te. To those who are constantly devoted to love to those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed his special favor upon Srila Rupa Goswami because Rupa Goswami wanted to serve the Lord to the best of his ability. Such is the reciprocation between the devotee and the Lord in the discharge of devotional duties. One ninety eight. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu praised the metaphors and other literary ornaments of Srila Rupa Goswami's transcendental poetry. Without such poetic attributes, he said, there is no possibility of preaching transcendental mellows. Text one ninety nine. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested all his personal associates to bless Rupa Goswami so that he might continuously describe the pastimes of Vrindavan which are full of emotional love of Godhead. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Srila Rupa Goswami's elder brother whose name is Sanatan Goswami is such a wise and learned scholar that no one is equal to him. <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Ramananda Roy, Sanatan Goswami's renunciation <coughs> of material connections is just like yours. <coughs> Humility, renunciation, and excellent learning exist in him simultaneously. I empowered both of these brothers to go to Vrindavan to expand the literature of bhakti. Purport. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu informed Sri Ramananda Roy that he and Sanatan Goswami had engaged equally in devotional service after giving up all relationships with material activity. Such renunciation is a symptom of an unalloyed devotee engaged in the service of the Lord with no tinge 
of material contamination. According to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is the position of Trinadapi Sunichina, Tarodapi Suhishduna. A pure devotee, free from the reactions of the material modes of nature, executes devotional service with tolerance like that of a tree. He also feels humbler than the grass. Such a devotee, who is called Nishkinchana, or free from all material possessions, is always absorbed in emotional love of Godhead. He is reluctant to perform any kind of sense gratification. In other words, such a devotee is free from all material bondage, but he engages in Krishna conscious activities. Such expert devotional service is performed without hypocrisy. Humility, renunciation and learned scholarship were combined in Sanatana Goswami, the ideal pure devotee who was on the same level of understanding as Srila Ramananda Roy. Like Ramananda Roy, Sanatana Goswami was a fully cognizant expert in the conclusion of devotional service and was therefore able to describe such transcendental knowledge. Srila Ramananda Roy replied to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, My Lord, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If you like, you can cause even a wooden doll to dance. I see that the truths regarding transcendental mellows that you expounded through my mouth are all explained in the writings of Srila Rupa Goswami. Because, you are cause, because of your causeless mercy toward your devotees, you want to describe the transcendental pastimes of Vrindavan. Anyone empowered to do this can bring the entire world under your influence. Purport This passage parallels the statement from Krishna Shakti, the, the statement, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahi Tara Pravartan, which means that unless empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, one cannot spread the holy name of the Lord throughout the entire world. C.C. Antya 7, 11 Under the protection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, a pure devotee can preach the holy name of the Lord so that everyone may take advantage of this facility and thus become Krishna conscious. I'll stop there. Hare Krishna. It's hard to stop, but I have to. I've, my voice is going. Hare Krishna. It's 8.11. The wonders of mm, pure love of Godhead are being described by Rupa Goswami. Imagine, there's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is who? Krishna, but Krishna in the mood of Radha. Right? You've got Ramananda Roy and Srupa Damara, who's Vishaka and Lalita. Right? And they're all <coughs> inquiring from Rupa Goswami, who is who? <coughs> Rupa Manjari. So compared in the spiritual world, Rupa Manjari is a little girl, 12 years old. 11 years old. And here are these three big personalities submitting to her uh, abilities, her expertise, his, her glorious uh, knowledge of devotional mellows. It's, it's unbelievable. It's inconceivable. Hare Krishna. So that's it for the night for the reading. If there's any reflections or comments or discussion, please be my guest. Hare Krishna. We're at two oh six.
a question from Krishnangi Mulder. Oh, Krishnangi Mulder. Hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, how wonderful that Krishna never gives up his loving smile. How to follow him in doing that? You can't follow him in doing that. You can't become like Krishna. What you can do is pray to be able to serve him and to serve that smile, to act in such a way as to bring about, bring about that smile. That is pure devotional service, to act in such a way to make Krishna smile. And you do that by acting in such a way to make your spiritual master smile. Hare Krishna. And how to act that way is to hear these pastimes <clears throat> and follow in the footsteps of these great souls according to your capacity. Not imitate them not try to be them, but you try to serve them. And you serve them, as was hinted at by Lord Chaitanya when he expressed how and why he empowered Rupa Goswami to uh, spread the knowledge of pure devotional service in Vrindavan. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Bhakta Ben says, Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Bhakta Ben. It's amazing and encouraging that Krishna helps us to serve him. Yes. He empowers us. We cannot serve him without being empowered by him. What to speak of giving this nectar to others? But we should hear these things. They're there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which not that we should not we, we should avoid hearing these things. <clears throat> but in the neophyte condition, we shouldn't dwell there until the teachings of the Gita are uh, fixed up in our heart. In other words, w when we are acting according to the instructions of the Gita, avoiding passion and ignorance avoiding lust, anger, and greed, becoming fixed in serving, uh, being undisturbed by uh, any material duality, uh, any disturbance, and seeing everyone with an equal mind, uh, without conception of friend and enemy, and so on and so forth, then we can hear these pastimes on another level and be awakened to spiritual emotion. These emotions have nothing to do with the material modes of nature. They have nothing to do with the, with the emotions of the material world. They're completely transcendental. So we have to learn about Krishna, learn about the science of Krishna consciousness, learn about how to act uh, as if we're not the body even though we are still in the body and we're still thinking we're the body, we have to practice acting like we're not the body. And that means to stay engaged in devotional service uh, steadily over time. Every day, hear the books of Srila Prabhupada. Every day, try to explain them to others somehow or other, depending on who you are, where you are, what your circumstances are, what your capacity is. And in this way, you, you are brought into this world of ecstatic emotion and ecstatic feelings toward Krishna and Krishna's devotees. Especially uh, through Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his eternal associates. Hare Krishna. Krishnangi says, Hare Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna to you, thank you. And from Rati Manjari. Hare Krishna, Rati. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. 
Tonight was very transcendental, and it is only the beginning of the Antelila. Yes, correct. I hope that by hearing all these nectarian pastimes from your lotus lips, I may be able to appreciate them, even on my neophyte level. Yes, that's our duty, to hear them and appreciate them. In 1976, there was a controversy that arose. This was when the Chaitanya Charitamrita first came out. And when devotees first started hearing verses like these, they became so, uh, you know, attached to them. And they thought that because Krishna says in the Gita that whatever you're thinking of at the time of death, then you'll attain that. They thought, we will just hear these verses and nothing else and then when we leave our bodies, we'll become gopis. They're thinking like that. So they made a club. It was called the Gopi Bhava Club. And when Prabhupada heard about it, he became furious. And he told them, the ones that he had, the, the leaders of this group, into his room. And he told them, you're not ready for this. And then they began to preach to Srila Prabhupada from his own books as if to tell him, but Prabhupada, we're doing what you're telling us to do. What's wrong with that? And Prabhupada finally got so furious with him, he said, you should go and start your own movements. I'm not elevated enough to associate with you. And then they left. And they left the movement. And not all of them, but most of them. The, the, the leaders did. Then afterwards, after they left the room, <clears throat> Prabhupada sat back and he smiled and he said, but this does not mean that you boycott Srimati Radharani. <laughs> so that means we should hear these things, but we should hear them in the right mood with a, with a humble attitude that we're very fallen and low we we can't even imagine becoming gopis. This is mayavad. Just like it's to imagine that you're Krishna, to imagine you're gopis is also mayavad. It's just as more dangerous. <coughs> so we should hear these things, but we should we should and we should appreciate them. But we should continue to hear the Gita. We should continue to hear the Bhagavatam. We should continue to hear the, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and the devotees that, and, and the books that describe the science of devotional service. And we should aspire to become advanced in devotional service. And then what? Then give it to others. Because I'll tell you, from 48 years of experience, my observation is, my observation is that most of those who do get prematurely attracted to the elevated topics and try to imitate them, they lose the preaching spirit. They stop preaching. They only stay by themselves and think about themselves in relationship to Krishna and Vrindavan and they stop preaching. And that was not in, that is not in our line. It may be that very advanced devotees can do that and it pleasing to Krishna. But in our line, we should preach. We should preach the Bhagavad Gita and in that way become guru to others. Hare Krishna. Hare Manjari has a question. Yes. She says, I have a question which is slightly related to the content but relevant to me in my life. I mean to say that it is relevant to me in the sense that I notice mm -hmm that for some time there has been a popular figure on the Bhakti Yoga path who is preaching Raghunuga Bhakti over Vaidhi Bhakti and who is attracting and initiating all types of people. They have spiritual names and are posting all over Facebook all kinds of disturbing posts which are really not in line with what we have been told by Srila Prabhupada. That's all very casual and completely out of line. I am worried that these people who seem total sahajyas, who claim to follow an avadu leader who preaches ecstatic love of God, will give Krishna consciousness a bad name again. 
How should we respond to this phenomenon, directly or indirectly? And what should we say? Well, first of all, you shouldn't say anything to them. You should avoid them. You know, you should avoid them. It's described very clearly in the purports of Chaitanya Charitamrita that when devotees take this path and become sahaja, there are two uh, major categories of deviation. One of them is sahaja, in which they take the pastimes of Krishna cheaply and they try to imitate them and try to prematurely enter into those moods and into those, even into those activities sometimes. And the other is mayavad, which means to accept that Krishna's form is maya and to, and to aspire in, in your service to merge into Krishna and lose your uh, individual identity and to become Krishna. So, of the two, the mayavad is more dangerous because at least the sajjas, they accept Krishna. Uh, but again, um, it is stated that these are kali chelas. They're dressed like devotees, but they, um, they're not pure devotees in their hearts. They have ulterior motives. They're into enjoying Krishna. This is the difference. They're trying to enjoy Krishna or to enjoy with Krishna rather than to serve Krishna. So this idea of giving up Vaidhi Bhakti to attain Raganuga Bhakti is against the teachings of Rupa Goswami. Prabhupada explains this many times in his purports. I'm sure you've read them yourself. Continue to read, please, until they get fixed in your heart. But you, you, you approach uh, Raganuga Bhakti through the process of Vaidhi Bhakti. Because the process of Vaidhi Bhakti purifies the heart <clears throat> until it is pure. And then you can actually uh, think of Krishna in your mind. But externally, uh, according to Rupa Goswami, you act like a neophyte. You think of yourself as a neophyte. Just listen carefully to what Rupa Goswami is saying to the praise of these great souls. Listen and accept what you hear and become humble and serve in order to become eligible to go back to Vrindavan and associate with Krishna and his loving associates. Con consider yourself unqualified. Don't consider yourself qualified. I'm not saying that you do. I'm just preaching in general now. And uh, yes, become the menial servant. Don't try to imitate the gopis. This is abominable. It will create a disturbance in society. Uh, I'm not sure about it giving Krishna consciousness a bad name in the West because the West, they have no idea about anything. It may, you know, give Krishna consciousness a, a bad name in, the, in India, surely. But uh, for, those, for those who are in, in the know, but uh, yes, uh, avoid them. Don't think that you can convert them or you can save them or whatever. There was a devotee, I won't mention names, but he was one of the original gurus. And he uh, became, uh, he fell victim to intoxication and he thought he was having ecstatic symptoms. And he went to Radhakund thinking that he was going to give them Prabhupada's mercy. <laughs> and he ended up becoming one like one of them. And he met with an inglorious end. Hare Krishna. So it's serious. Devotional service is serious. 
uh, aspiration, uh, spiritual aspirations, devotional aspirations are serious. They're not so cheap that you can just think that you want to be like this or like that. You have to actually become pure devotees, pure devotee and serve and keep serving and let the revelation come naturally by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna. Ati Manjari says, thank you. That is a clear guideline for me to practice and follow. Mm. And then a comment from Yadutama. Okay, Hare Krishna Yadutama. He says, Hare Krishna Gurudev, my obeisances and glories to Prabhupada. Thank you for bringing out such important topics. You are keeping us on the straight and narrow. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. That is my goal in life, to keep myself on the straight and narrow. <laughs> Live to be corrected. That is the right mentality. Otherwise you'll run around and think you're correcting everyone else. As soon as people run around and think they're correcting everyone else, including the Christian consciousness movement, they're not living to be corrected. Hare Krishna. Rati is asking, is it proper for me to become angry when I see these posts? Those posts? Uh, I, I don't think... If, you, if, they, if they actually blaspheme Iskon or blaspheme Prabhupada, or blaspheme the devotees of Iskon, yes, then you are, you are entitled to get angry. You should get angry. But if it's just they're slobbering all over the you know, the internet. I, I don't think that that's anything to get angry over. Maybe pity, pity them, feel sorry for them. But it does invoke a negative feeling because they mislead people and that's very bad. Rata says, yes, they blaspheme the deities. They blaspheme the deities? Well, if they blaspheme the deities, then why are you hearing that blaspheme? That means you're going to the internet to hear them. Don't go to the internet to hear them. Stop going to those places. Period. Because that anger is actually it will, it, yeah, it'll it'll disrupt your devotional life. Unless you can do something about it, unless you're strong enough and pure enough to, you know, s correct them, then stay away from them. That's what I said about one that one devotee I was talking about. That's what he was thinking. He can go there and, you know and help them by giving them. He was thinking he was carrying Prabhupada's mercy. He was going to give it to them. He was above falling down. We should be... Prabhupada used to say, and also and this came from Sanatana Goswami also, that one should develop a healthy fear of Maya. Healthy fear means that we should be fear afraid of again falling under the influence of Maya. And that should result in care and attention, especially in our hearing and chanting and what we hear and chant and how we hear and chant, from whom we hear and chant. Okay, I'm going to stop now. My, I'm, my voice is starting to go. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai Samabira Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Gaur Prem Anandi Hari Hari Bo. See, it's tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. More of the same. Nectarian love of God. Hare Krishna. <laughs>